The AACPG continues to support making informed decisions about your health. We are revisiting the Eat Well, Live Well series. Black men have a 40% higher death rate than white men from cancer. African American women have a 20% higher death rate from cancer than white women. Now this doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong. It just means there's some things that we can change. You can enjoy and love food and at the same time give your body what it needs to keep your cells healthy, your immune system function well, and to fight off the illnesses that run in your family. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for part two of the Eat Well, Live Well series. Enjoy. Welcome to this Facebook Live event brought to you by the African American Community Partnership Group, AACPG. I am Mary Harris Reese, your moderator for today's presentation. My background is I'm a retired registered nurse with 20 years of clinical experience and 17 years of administrative experience as a um, quality insurance professional. This is our second of a three-part series on Eat Well, Live Well. The AACPG is a community needs-driven effort working collectively to help the African-American community work through and overcome COVID-19 and health disparities. We do this by providing the tools of education and self-care. The AACPG works with other community organizations to provide a united effort of advocacy, education, and social justice. You can join us at Facebook, dot com slash double a cpg lake county or instagram at double a cpg lake county i invite you at this time to add your comments to the chat there on the right you can click like you can share this presentation with your facebook or instagram friends and you can even host the watch party our first session on last Wednesday covered heart disease prevention. Today's session will cover cancer prevention. And the third session, which will be on next Wednesday, we will cover diabetes prevention. And all of these are within your control through your diet. These sessions focus on the why certain dietary habits can lead to diseases and the how to eat better to prevent diseases. We will have a Q&A session, so be sure to leave your questions in the comments. And at this time, I would like to introduce our very notable, knowledgeable panelists for today's session. Demetrius Willis, he is the co-chair of the AACPG and our registered dietitian nutritionist. Demetrius is also a certified personal trainer and a community leader. He began his studies at Louisiana Tech University and received a Bachelor of Science degree in Nutrition and Dietetics and went on to receive a Master of Science degree in Health and Physical Education. Demetrius continues his effort of disease prevention and management while addressing health disparities on a national and local level as the lead of his clinical nutrition team and as a diversity leader for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And we have a chef with us also, Chef Idrit Godet. Idrit comes to us with over 20 years of experience in the restaurant industry. She is bringing that New Orleans flavor to Detroit's West Village community as the co-owner and chef of Gabrielle Hall. This is a New Orleans restaurant, bar, and music venue that is dedicated to celebrating the food, music, and culture of New Orleans and honoring the rich Detroit New Orleans musical and culinary history connection. Edric is also co founder of In the Business of Food. This is a food service consulting agency that creates curriculum, facilitates workshops, and provides consultation for businesses in the food industry 
and for nonprofits. And I just have to mention, um, Edric just recently um, within her community area provided meals for over 5,000 underserved individuals in the Detroit ad, um, area. That is just commendable. And not only was there food provided and not just a sandwich or something, but a full Thanksgiving meal with all of the trimmings and even provided some food cooking utensils. So that's just amazing. She deserves a wonderful hand for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really inspiring and just wonderful. So at this time, we'll go ahead and kick it off, kick off our session. And we'll start with um, Demetrius. So I understand you have quite a unique um, definition of healthy. Can you expound on that for us a little bit, Demetrius? Sure, sure. Thanks for asking that. Um, so healthy has two different ways of looking at it, right? We talk about a healthy body and we talk about healthy food. So when we talk about healthy body, clinically, we're saying that this body is really doesn't have disease in it, okay? When we talk about healthy food, we're talking about something different. And for example, healthy, when I define that for my clients, healthy means that you can use all of it, okay? It serves some purpose for you. That's where we can call something healthy. And we use the word healthy for a lot of different foods that only part of it our body can use. So water is just an example of this is a healthy thing. You drink it, your body says, I know exactly what that is, and I'm putting it to work right now. Versus something else you might have, like a soda. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's say, Mary, you drink this soda, then this, your body can't use all of it. It only uses a part of it. So for something like this, we don't call it, and we can't call it healthy. But of course, fruits and vegetables, those are healthy because you can use 100% of them for something. My comment I was going to make there is that we never really consider water as a dietary substance. That's true. It's just sort of a second thought. Maybe we'll go until we kind of feel that thirst urge, and then maybe we'll think about grabbing a drink of water. But tell us a little bit more about the importance of water and how that needs to come to the forefront and not be a second thought. Absolutely. So when we talk about water, we're talking about hydration. And water is very interesting because like you said, it's one of the last things people are reaching for to quote unquote, quench their thirst. And in reality, it should be one of the first things we reach for. So when we talk about that and we talk about water, um, we kind of go back to how much water are you supposed to drink a day and why? And the whole thing that we're, we wanted to do this series is to talk about the why and the how. So for example, I'm sure you heard, how many glasses of water would you say somebody should have a day? Only oh, tell us eight glasses a day. They tell us eight glasses. Get all that in, but that's- what Yeah. <laughs> and, and the most amazing part of that is that it's true. You're commonly told it's eight glasses of water. And the reason why they came up with that number is between urine, poop, feces, right? Um, sweating, crying, uh, whatever other ways, breathing. These are all ways that you put out water from your system. And in the end, it ends up being around eight cups. So somebody did the math, okay? It's back in the day science. And they say, you know what? You're getting off eight, you take eight, you're gonna be good to go. And over time, we found that it's much more complicated than that. So I did some research and we have different groups that have done analysis and we have National Academy of Medicine, National Academies of Science, Engineering, Medicine and the Institute of Medicine. And the reason why I mention those is because how much water you should drink is actually one of the more debated things that goes on. What should you drink if you're thirsty? So what they found is that someone should take in actually more water than we're thinking. And let me explain why. So let's say, for example, this is your blood, okay? It's nice, it's hydrated, it's flowing. So there's no problem here, okay? And your body has no problem with pushing this through your system. We talked a little bit about that with your heart last time. And then we have a body that might be dehydrated. 
okay? And you see how this blood runs. It's much thicker, okay? It takes a lot more work to get it to where it needs to be. And that poses a challenge because when we put it all together and we talked about heart disease last week, right? And we had blood pressure and we talked about the fat. And then we talk about the thickness and hydration. It ends up being this really sad killer combo that's affecting the black community. So one of the things we talked about last time was this, and this was the cholesterol. And we pretend like this was your heart and it's trying to pump, but the blood pressure makes it work a little harder, right? And then we have it, we want it to pump through all of this. And then when we make it more complicated by not taking in enough hydration, think about the toll it takes on your heart to just work how it needs to. And that's really the reason why that water is so important. So it's much more than just what you're putting out your system. Okay, so if it's all about just some fluid so that the blood isn't so thick, if I really don't like water that much, why can't I have that Pepsi 7-Up or a little Kool-Aid or it, it's, right. it's fluid. It's all going to help that blood not to be so thick, right? That's true. But remember, we want to put something healthy in there first, uh -huh. right? So we want to make sure we give our body what it needs before we give our taste buds what they want. <laughs> and that's kind of how we end up if you really wanna start moving towards being healthier, we have to prioritize. And many days are not prioritized. Many meals are not prioritized. We just kind of like, ah, I have a taste for this mm -hmm. instead of my body needs this. And that's why we have to make those decisions when it comes to soda and all these other things that contribute so much sugar into your body that, well, I can only use this much and really we just needed water. The other interesting part, Mary, is that if you don't take in enough hydration, what they found is that your body can confuse the need for drinking more water with eating more food. So you'll be hungry and try to, or you'll think you'll be hungry, and it's actually that you're thirsty. Oh, so we really encourage people to keep that hydration where it is. Yeah. Like I said, we talk about eight cups, but it really ends up being... For men, we recommend between 12 and 15, and for women, 9 and 11. So it's it's not hugely different, but like you mentioned from the get-go, yeah, eight cups is a little hard to do. But you do have hydration in fruits and vegetables, and you do have hydration in other foods that you might eat. So it's really the big picture that we're looking at. Okay, very good. I thought that was an excellent demonstration to th show the thickness of that fluid because lots of times that's what can contribute to various different heart conditions. Yeah. You had a little extra fat on top of that and you get that narrow vessel and then you got this thick grudgery fluid trying to go through it. So it's it's what we take in is, is who we are. So very, very good demonstration there. I like that. So tell us a little bit about what does a healthy diet consist of? So a healthy diet, I would consider, um, like I mentioned, you want to be able to take in what your body needs before what your taste buds want. And about mm -hmm. two thirds of your day's meals should actually come from some type of plant source. And mind you, that's fruits, that's vegetables, um, all these things that don't have that extra processing in them. So that way, when it goes in your system, your body can literally say, I know exactly what to do with that. Versus, yeah, we don't quite know what this is. Go ahead and send it to the stomach and it, it can't figure it out. Go ahead and send it to the liver and maybe the liver can figure it out. And we have these things that we eat that aren't healthy that really continue to pass through our system and sometimes get stored in places. Okay, interesting. So can you give us what are the top three types of food that a, a, a healthy diet should consist of? Okay. So I would say the first one is the hydration. So if we're going to rank the top three things, um, yes. hydration should be at the top of your list. Um, I would say the next thing is probably fruits and vegetables. And like I said, the two thirds of the food that you eat should come from a plant. And um, the idea is that these fruits and vegetables have chemicals in them that are natural. 
And what they do is they actually help protect your cells. Now, throughout your whole life, you're going to be making cells and have cells in your body that aren't quite acting right, or maybe they have some type of problem, and your system is built to say, hey, you don't belong here, and to get rid of it. But the more junk we take in our system and the lack of protection we have in our body, what happens is those cells can actually stick around and actually begin to multiply. And that's where we start to move into having these different diagnoses of diseases, chronic disease and cancer. So by eating the fruits and vegetables, which is the second thing I'd recommend, what we're doing is giving our body those chemicals to protect our cells and it's kind of given this little police force inside of you to allow it to say, hey, you don't belong here. You need to go. And then the water is going to allow us to urinate and get rid of what shouldn't be in there. OK, interesting. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of puzzled in why in that top three, there was not mention of protein and meat. Good question. So in my top three, protein and meat isn't there. Um, you need protein, but you can get protein from other sources. And once we start moving into meat, especially red meats, we are finding that those type of things actually contribute to be, you being sick. We're not meant to eat meat all the time. Um, and if we do eat meat, it should have something, remember, that contributes to your health. So like fish would be something that you could take in your system that's going to contribute to your health. Your body knows what it is and can use the parts of it. When you get to these other things that are highly processed, your body can't really process it like that, like you think. Okay. So then I can get my adequate supply of protein on a plant-based diet? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it's not, some people feel like, well, that means that I must be drinking shakes all the time. No, it's... There's a lot of other sources of protein that you can attach to. Nuts have protein in them. Beans are a great source of protein. Um, you have a lot of other sources, nuts, all these other things, eggs that you can use that will give a little sprinkle of the protein that you need, but you're also getting in the fruits and vegetables and the other things that are actually contribute a lot to your health. Okay, interesting. So what would you recommend for parents that have difficulty getting their kids to eat and then basically a variety of foods? I mean, a child can find one item that they like and they want that every single day. Yeah. So how do you get that variety in a child's meal plan? I can tell you, even if we speak nowadays, COVID-19, and as a parent, I'm making some of the hardest decisions that I'm hoping I ever have to make for my kids. And it's all based on trying to keep them safe. Are they gonna go to school or not? Are they gonna play sports or not? Are they gonna wear a mask all the time? Um, these are the things that we have to make decisions on. And it's all based on their health. And we take that so heavily, but we should be taking just as heavily what we're putting in their system. And this is a battle that shouldn't be a fight. And it's gonna end up being a negotiation. But right now, it's really important as children that they are exposed to a whole lot of different fruits and vegetables. You know, it's funny, I went to the grocery store today and my son happened to be with me this time when I went to the grocery store and I grabbed the cauliflower pizza. And he said, why are you getting that kind of pizza? Get that kind of pizza. And it was one of the ones that had all this other stuff on it. And I said, no, this is the one we usually get. I haven't been eating cauliflower pizza. Yes, you have. I've been buying this for six months, but he never knew. And it tasted fine. It actually tasted good. And it's that exposure to those things that's really important. By the time kids are about 12, they've almost established their eating patterns. Kids that eat or adults that are drinking high fat milk, they've been drinking that since a kid. People who have food aversions or really hate certain foods, they've been hating those since they were a kid. So if you can really expose them at a young age, parents need to understand that you are setting the path of health right then for the rest of their life almost. Okay, interesting. And so variety is the key so they can get multiple different vitamins and minerals and nutrients in. Absolutely. And 
like with having Chef Idrick here, it's such a great opportunity for people to learn these new recipes because you can tell them about new recipes and they're like, uh, no, I'm good. I always eat spaghetti and I always eat pizza. And then we have macaroni and cheese and then we have a fried chicken day, you know? And it's these same foods they're eating week after week. And your body cannot process those things like you think. The increased amount of carbohydrates that flood your system, the increased amount of processed foods that flood your, flood your system, that your body just ends up not knowing what to do with, stores it somewhere, and those cells actually feed on it and it actually ends up becoming something that's not good for you. And the fact that those things contribute to obesity and heart disease just make everything so much more complicated for the human body. Okay. I'm getting really excited to get to Idrit because I know she has some wonderful um, samples prepared for us. Yeah. But I do want to just um, dive in a little bit into the immune system. Tell okay. Us a little bit about the immune system and what can we do to sort of boost our immune system or just to basically keep our immune system functioning properly? Okay. That's a great question because I get that question from really on a regular basis now of people who are feeling like they understand the importance of nutrition and that maybe eating the right things can increase their immune system to keep away COVID or to keep away the flu and these other things that, you know, we're becoming more aware of. Mm -hmm. So I would say when I talk about the immune system and giving your body the tools it needs, I would say first off that you wanna make sure that you have the fruits and vegetables, the hydration. One of the other things I mentioned was fiber. And fiber is gonna be really important because it brings a feeling of fullness to you when you're eating, but it also allows things to pass through your system. For example, fiber is similar to having something like this, just a little brush. And for your GI tract, it kind of goes through and kind of cleans a little bit of things out. It actually passes through and sometimes it'll take cholesterol and not allow it to stick around in your system as it passes through. So fiber is really important and so much importance to it that we need 30 grams of fiber at least a day. And the average person actually takes in 15. Mm -hmm. And fiber brings these great things to your GI tract your, your track, the bottom part of your digestive tract and your probiotics and all these things to help you be healthy. And the other part that you wanna consider with the immune system, if I were to list out some vitamins that people need to keep in mind, I would say zinc, I would say vitamin D, I would say vitamin C, omega-3s, and I would say probiotics. And I just ran through a bunch of vitamins, but let me be a little bit more specific. Mm -hmm. So for zinc, typically it'd be about 30 milligrams, okay, per day. For vitamin D, around 600, and they call them IUs, international units. Um, for vitamin C, it's gonna be about 90 milligrams or more. And vitamin C is one of those different ones, whereas it's really hard to get too much vitamin C because when you take a lot, you end up peeing it out. So you're gonna be okay. Um, Omega-3s, omega-3s are going to be anti-inflammatory. They really help keep your cells healthy. So that's why omega-3s are so important. Um, salmon, um, olive oil, there's a lot of things that have omega-3s in them, but you want them from a natural source if you can. And there, those are going to be about 500. And then um, you have probiotics. Now probiotics, remember for your gut, it's going to help keep things healthy in there. Because when you eat a lot of junk food, then your GI tract, you remember the bottom part of your digestive tract, it can get gunked up with bad bacteria. And that bad bacteria can cause you to have all kinds of things going on inside your body. When you have good bacteria, then it's gonna help things get absorbed better. It's gonna help things flow out of your system better. And actually they're finding connections with how your brain and your heart work um, based on your probiotics and, and the balance of your GI tract. So um, sauerkraut, um, kimchi, Greek yogurt, um, kombucha is one of those things that people are very popular of. All those things have probiotics in them that can help you out to keep you healthy. So when we talk about the immune system, those are the things I would say. So the probiotics is not a term. 
So really need to to be educated a little bit more on the those types of foods so that we can keep the system clean. But yeah. one question because if I just don't get that full balanced diet in, why don't I just take um, vitamins every day? Can I really substitute vitamins for what I think I'm lacking? Okay, good question. Um, can you just eat what you want and maybe take a multivitamin, worst case scenario, right? <laughs> right. So natural is always going to be better because remember, your body has to be able to identify it. When you take a supplement of some type, your body still has to figure out what it is and then figure out what to do with it. But it's from a natural source, then your body knows what it is and how to put it together. And a lot of times foods complement each other. So just an example, calcium and vitamin D actually work together to help each other work inside your body. Um, iron and vitamin C work together when they get into your body. So those people who may have um, anemia, they need more iron. And they'll find that if you want to have iron, you get like a salad, uh, especially one with dark green leafy um, vegetables with it. And then you chase it with a little bit of orange juice or have some citrus, strawberries, or berries with it, it's going to help it absorb into your system. So that's how complex it is. Okay. So it's more complex than just popping a pill. Okay. All right. So some key points that you brought there that um, Edric will expound on a little bit more in the how-to process. But we're going to remember our water intake. We're going to remember to have lots of fruits and vegetables and to make sure that we get some fiber in our diet. That fiber. Thank you so much, um, Demetrius. Thank so, you. Idrit, can you give us the how now? How do we prepare Hi. these healthy items? Yes, how you doing, Miss Mary? Um, yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, that was amazing information by Demetrius. I always enjoy um, doing these. I always learn so much. Um, on these as well. And so to really get into Demetrius's first point about hydration, um, you know, you made a good comment in saying that, you know, there's some people that just don't like to taste the water. And I've heard that as well, um, that people don't like water. They don't like how it tastes. So one way to get in more water um, for those that are just do not like the taste of water is to add um, some citrus and other like fresh fruits and vegetables and herbs um, to add a little bit of flavor to that. So this is, you know, these are called infused waters. And so I just have regular, regular water that I'm going to infuse with um, orange slices, lemons, and I have also have ginger. Um, I also really enjoy infusing um, water with some mint as well. But any of that works, especially your citrus, if you want to even add lime, uh, pineapples, this is up to you. Um, so I'm just going to add some orange slices to my water. Then I'm gonna just cut up some of this lemon and add a few slices of that. Okay. All right. And then I just wanna add my pieces of ginger to this. What will the ginger Now, now the ginger is adding flavor to that as well. Um, so I, I particularly love ginger. So it's just adding some flavor. So now I have um, the citrus and ginger infused water that's gonna give it, like I said, a nice fresh citrus flavor with a little bit of that ginger. Um, and then again, you can use different fruits and vegetables. So things like um, you can use apples, you can use pineapples. You can also add mint. I really enjoy adding mint to my water. Um, and this will give it some flavor without adding any additional salts or calories or um, fat or any of that stuff, particularly for those people that say, again, I don't like the taste of water or, you know, I just, it's boring, right? I need something a little bit more interesting in order to get in all of that, that water that Demetrius says we need. Um, so this is a great way to do that. How long does that? So this is a really, um, just overnight. Okay. So you can make it at night, you can overnight in the refrigerator, um, you can pour it over ice or, or just like this. Um, I usually make a large, um, I usually do either a half gallon or a gallon um, of this a day. Um, and sometimes it's plain water, other times it is infused. Again, some of my favorites is definitely mint, ginger, lemons, limes, um, and I'm set for the rest of the day. Okay, great. 
Okay, so let's jump yes. into some of those vegetables. Yes, some of the vegetables. So Demetrius, uh, his, you know, really second um, point was really getting in as much fruits and vegetables um, and really more plant-based. Um, throughout your day. So really easy and fun snack um, that I love. Um, I know there's a lot of, you know, kids and maybe some of our young adults and our youth that love this as well. When it's super simple, it's fun to make as well. Um, and it really provides you with a really great snack option um, outside of like chips and crackers and things like that. So we're going to use kale. These are we're going to do some kale chips. And so I just got, you know, some nice fresh kale. And what I do is I just peel it um, off of this this thick stem. So I'm just going to pull it away from that thick stem. All right. Peel a couple pieces off. There's my stem. And all we want to do is once we peel it off, it's just to break it up into like bite-sized pieces. That's it. I'm just breaking it up into bite-sized pieces. So I have my kale cut up into bite-sized pieces. Now, once we do that, we just want to get some a healthy oil. So this is olive oil. I either use olive oil or avocado oil. Those are healthy oils that you can use. And just a drizzle, a light drizzle, just a little bit of salt. So just a pinch of salt. And now I'm just going to massage that oil on my kale. All right. And then from there, I'm just gonna take a cookie sheet that's been lined with some parchment paper. I'm gonna spread my kale on my cookie sheet. And then we're just gonna bake this in the oven at 350 for about 10, 12 minutes until you see the edges start to brown. And then once the edges start to brown, you're gonna pull that out and you're gonna be left with nice crispy kale chips. Beautiful crispy kale chips that are just like potato chips, they're nice and crispy. Um, nice, really great savory flavor. Um, and they're perfect for snacking. I'm gonna have And a great way to get that. those additional fruits and vegetables in. I am they're really, really great. Try that. I, was, I, I just recently have have developed a taste for kale. Normally I eat the collard, turnip, mustard, but recently I have been eating kale. But that looks like an interesting snack. So I'm gonna give that a try. It's really fun. What's really, what's super cool is that I know, you know, if you have any kids in the home, it's a really great fun thing for them to do together with you because all mm -hmm. you're doing is peeling that away from the stem. You're, you know, just tearing it. So they don't, we don't need knives or anything sharp. Mm -hmm. um, again, a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, pinch of salt, and then you get to massage that. So I know kids love, I know I still love playing with my food. Um, so <laughs> kids can play around with that, massaging that oil on there. And then again, just mm -hmm. throwing it on a cookie sheet in the oven for 12 minutes, and it is super quick. So this could be an after school oh, snack, okay. um, anything like that. So it's really, really fun. It's super easy. And I was, it was very hard for me not to eat, eat all of these chips before we started. So <laughs> very excited um, to be able to eat them after. So we're going to move on to one more dish, and this is salmon tacos. Yes. So Demetrius Tell us about that. Yeah, Demetrius mentioned, you know, sources of protein and getting them from things like fish, um, especially things that include omega-3. So uh, we're going to, to do, again, super fun, super easy, super quick salmon tacos. So we did it was... Um, we want to get our salmon, and this is just a spice blend that I created, um, just of chili powder, cumin, um, chili powder, cumin, salt, black pepper, and a little bit of paprika. And all I did was I took this spice blend, sprinkled it on my salmon pieces, put the salmon in the oven at 450 for about 10 minutes. So it doesn't take long at all um, because you're, you're really roasting this at about 450, again, for 10 minutes, right? So when my salmon came out, Looks like this, nice and seasoned salmon, right? With really great seasonings on there. And then all we wanna do is we're gonna make a salsa. So again, another really fun thing to do with the kids and it's super fun and easy and simple. And then again, you can of course put the salsa on your taco, but you can also, you know, eat salsa as a snack with maybe some, um, some tortilla chips or something like that. So um, our salsa, we're just gonna do our diced tomatoes. So I diced up four um, plum tomatoes earlier. So we have our diced tomatoes. 
half a white onion that we just diced. I'm gonna add that for our salsa. Um, a fourth of a jalapeno. So no seeds, right? That I just and I just diced up this jalapeno. Then some garlic, one clove of garlic. I'm gonna add to that. Handful of chopped cilantro. Um, I absolutely love cilantro. I know there are some people um, that uh, cilantro tastes like soap to them. <laughs> um, and so I'm so glad that I don't have that problem. I absolutely love mm -hmm. cilantro. So the last thing we're gonna do, do you like cilantro, Ms. Mary? I do, it gives such a zest to food. In fact, that was the one request I made for my daughter-in-law for dinner for tomorrow to make sure to make some pico de gallo. And she puts lots of cilantro in it and it just yes. live and wakes up your taste buds. <laughs> it does and it's so fresh and it's, it's just, I love the taste of cilantro. And so to that, so I have my um, tomatoes, white onions, garlic, jalapeno, and then cilantro. And then to this, I'm going to squeeze the juice of one lime. Now to get as much juice as possible from this lime, we're gonna roll it um, with this part of our hand, we're just going to roll it on our cutting board, and that's going to kind of loosen those fibers in there so that we can get more juice out. So now that I've, you can see it's not as tight, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and cut that, and then we're just going to squeeze the juice of our lime on top. All right, and then again, pinch of salt. And then we are just going to mix that up. So now we have, again, super easy, quick salsa. Now, I don't, I like my salsa kind of chunky, or like you said, pico de gallo. If you want to, you can throw this in a food processor or a blender. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's a little smoother. It's more like puree, so it's more kind of salsa style that you would find in your tacos. Um, I love to keep it chunky like this. Okay, that's very similar to the ingredients that are used for the um, pico de gallo. Yeah, absolutely. Same. Major Same. difference is just how the consistency of it. Is that the difference? Yep, that's all it is. So that so now we're going to go ahead and assemble our taco. So I have a whole wheat tortilla, right? This is the plain whole wheat tortilla. I actually took this and you can, um, I like to heat this up. I like to char this right on my stove. I have a gas stove. So I can actually, if you have a gas stove, you can actually take this and char this right on the open flame. Um, get a nice crisp to the edges, mm -hmm. right? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna take our salmon that we made earlier and we're just gonna break it up right here on our shell. Right. Then we're going to take our pico and we're just going to spoon that right on top. Okay. And then we're just going to finish that off because I love it so much with just a little bit more cilantro as a garnish. I know you and me, you would get along very well, Miss Mary. Love me some cilantro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now you have, again, really quick, easy, delicious salmon taco, you have your omega-3s, you have your fiber from your whole wheat um, tortilla shell, and then you have your fresh vegetables. That is just salmon tacos. Cool. And actually I'm having salmon tomorrow. And so with the pico de gallo that my daughter-in-law brings, I'm actually going to make a taco. Now for that wheat um, tortilla, you mentioned that you just, you kind of heat it, but can you just have it as a soft, shell taco? Absolutely. You can absolutely have it as a soft shell. Um, okay. Usually I do corn tortillas. So I either do whole wheat tortillas or I actually do just regular corn tortillas. And the corn tortillas, um, because they're a little bit more fibrous, I will tend, I'll tend to heat those up and char those um, just so they're a little bit more pliable. Um, but these are nice and soft. So you definitely don't have to char. Um, that's just, that's just a personal thing for sure. <laughs> Okay, very good. So there again, we saw the infusion water so that we can get our fluid in for 
Those of us that can't tolerate just the plain water, that's a way to sort of spice it up a little bit and still make sure you get your water without, as Dimitri said, adding anything that you do not need. So you're keeping everything healthy there. And then your fruits and vegetables. It's a wonderful demonstration on the kale chips. I can't wait to try those also. And then of course, the, the, the fiber that we get in from our um, meat source and the other vegetables. So very good. Demetri, yes. do you have anything to add to that? I don't see where we have any questions that have come in from our audience yet, but if there's any Thing that you would like to add to um, that or? No, I mean, just when we talk about healthy and, and I loved everything that Edric made because honestly, it was everything that your body could use. You look at the salsa she made and it was all natural stuff. It, she made it that quickly. <laughs> um, so it was amazingly fast. And the idea that you can take all that in and your body knows exactly what to do with it. So the same thing for the water is just adding a little bit of vitamins to that, like she was talking about, and your body can use everything. So your body's constantly under attack from germs all over the place, from the things we're putting in our system that our body can't recognize, but to really take that step to give your body what it needs so it can defend itself is the best thing you do right now in your life and for your children to set that standard for them. Um, I loved everything you did today, Edric, and thank you and, and Mary. So Edric, where did we get your recipes from for those items? So the recipes will be available after this live. Um, so I know AACPG will have those recipes available. Also the recipes from last week with um, you know, heart disease prevention, as well as today's cancer prevention will be available to um, any other viewers. Okay, excellent. I really enjoyed both presentations. So I'd like to thank our audience also for joining us. We hope to see you next week. And remember to eat well, live well.